Hey there guys, what's going on? My name is Joe, and today we're back with another video. Now, Rome Total War 2. As you can see by the thumbnail today, we are going to be talking a little bit about the game so far. There's been a lot of reviews on the game, a lot of anger towards the game, and I'm going to shed my light on and my opinion on the game. Now, for all of you who don't know, I'm currently running a Let's Play of Sparta campaign on my channel as of present. You can probably check that out on my channel. Uh, there's four videos, or four episodes, sorry, up so far of it. So make sure you check those out and drop a like, or if you enjoy them, that is, drop a like. If you don't, be sure to let me know why and uh, what I'm doing wrong. But today I thought I'd talk a little bit about the game in general. So good and bad things about the game. You can kind of class this as a mini review, I suppose, in a lot of ways, but generally speaking, this is kind of my overall opinion. So this isn't fact, this isn't set in stone at all, but you can kind of, you know, uh, take it as uh, some advice for getting the game. Um, so, starting off with the positives, which is always a good thing to do. Positives of the game. It looks pretty. The game really does look nice. You know, I'm not going to really go bad, like, you know, go ham on the graphics like. But they do look, you know, quite nice. Um, but, uh, you know, that's if you can run the game on a high setting. I'll get into that later, that's more of a rant than anything else. Uh, next good thing about the game is the uh, scale of the game. Scale of the game is awesome, 300 turns as a campaign. Wow, you're never going to be able to do that in any reputable time. Uh, you know, you can't just rush through a campaign in a day unless you are like Usain Bolt at this game. Because I know I can't, I've had 40 hours gameplay on it and I am barely getting anywhere on this game. So. Next but not least on positive list is going to be the um, look of the soldiers, feel of the soldiers, things like that. Very cool. Next good thing is the prologue. Prologue really well made. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Really, you know, really did involve me in the game as a whole. Now you might think I'm sounding a bit sarcastic here, but I'm really eager to get onto the negatives because I think I need to get this off my chest. But either way, we'll go on to number five of the positives. Now number five of the positives is going to be the updates. The updates have done a lot for the game so far. In terms of performance wise and actually letting people play the game in the first place, that is a big yes. Because there was actually a lot of issues and I encountered one of the issues where I actually reinstall my game and delete files just so I could actually play the game and it wouldn't freeze when I started it up. Bit disappointed, uh, lost all my campaigns, had to restart. You'll remember if you've watched uh, my Sparta Let's Play series all the way through, and my first episode is different to the second episode, only by a bit because I tried to make it as, you know, the same as possible, but it ended up being a little bit different. So next is the negative list. So I've listed briefly some positive things, but I'm going to go into a bit more depth about the negative things because these are what's important to you when you're thinking about buying this game or, you know, you're trying to make up an opinion of whether or not you think it was worth the money. And I'm here to help as always. So was the game worth the money? Uh, I could have waited. I could have personally waited a few extra months and waited for them to actually finish the game. Now, yes, the game was actually finished, or so they say. It doesn't feel finished. It feels like it's awaiting a big 7 gigabyte update, adding lots of features and more depth to the whole game. Now, what do I mean by depth? Well, diplomacy to start off with. The diplomacy in the game is so weak, it's unbelievable. Yes, a trading in between faction to faction is pretty cool. I like the system of that, and there's a fair amount of options. However, when playing as Rome or Carthage, and you have the internal struggle, which, you know, Creative Assembly really did make a big fuss about, that you're going to have to watch out for characters, make decisions, you know, assassinations, all that stuff, it really does fall down, sadly. I was looking forward to having rebellions. When I only own two senators out of, like, 400, I was expecting to be thrown off, you know, in charge of the country, and have to fight my way back in with what army or what I had left. You know, that could have been a good idea for them to put in, so you have to watch your diploma, uh, diplomatic status, as well as just going around destroying shit, but we'll get onto that later. So, diplomacy systems feels weak, it doesn't feel finished, it just feels like, what's even the point of having this internal struggle there, because the, it's not a struggle at all. It's kind of just there, for, uh, you know, it's just like a fancy button to click on in the middle of the screen. It's, it's just not, it's not complete, it doesn't feel ready. Uh, next thing to add on to that is my cool little cutscenes. Where have my cutscenes gone? I loved the little cutscenes in Shogun 2, especially the ninja ones and stuff, because it was just so, you know, it added a bit of life to the campaign map, you know, when you were 
and a bit of life to your character as well. So, you know, when you were moving your ninja around and you made some stupid ass mistake and only just managed to get away with his life, it was pretty funny and you kind of made a little bit of a bond between you and that ninja in particular. Um, when it comes to Rome, instead, you just get a pop up message. Is it. Was it complete? No. Was it complete? Yes. It's kind of like. You just, why they took it out of the game, it's like they have it in Shogun 2, it seems like they've gone back a step in that respect, uh, to be honest, as al along with the AI, which is what I'll move on to next. The AI in the game are fucking stupid. Now, I'm not going to get angry about this, but come on, it takes not a professional AI programmer to understand that the AI in this game is severely lacking. Now, I'll explain to you why. Me and my friends, and I'm sure they will probably watch this video and agree with me full down on this, is that when we were playing multiplayer especially, we decided to do a 3v3. Now this is, was a river crossing battle, and we were defending, they were attacking. So, there they were, as all Germanic tribes lined up on the other side of the river, and they tried to come across. And it was like an invisible barrier had just hit them. They would not run across the opening at all. They, they, it's like they just carried on running backwards and forwards, they were confused. We weren't moving troops, we were just stood there waiting for them to cross. And the AI was shitting bricks. It was just completely did not have a clue what it was doing at all. So it really kinda, you know, we were just stood there for the whole battle and it ended up with us attacking them. And we still won. Okay, and it's kinda like the AI is ridiculously simple. It does not think strategically at all. Now Crave Assembly made this big thing about the AI. You know, the AI will adapt to blah, 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 blah. No, it's really not adapting as well as I expected. Yes, it, in some situations it adapts. But, yeah, again, that's when they add the victory flags in. Now, a lot of people don't like the flags. I personally don't really come across them very often. But I, yeah, I'm kind of 50-50 on the whole idea. But the victory flags. I think, you know, you start to imagine that the whole reason they put these victory flags in there in the first place is so that the AI have an actual aim. Now you might be thinking, what do you mean? The AI have an aim to kill you. Yes, well, it's really lazy programming if they just put a flag and say, AI, go get the flag. That's simple enough to do, and it's effective. So you kind of start to have, you know, these kind of uh, theories about the fact that they've really just fucked over the whole AI system by trying to simplify it down and be lazy in their programming, which might be another reason why they brought the game forward by a whole uh, month. It wasn't supposed to come out until October, and instead we got it at the beginning of September. They brought it forward and it seems even, it seems like more unfinished than what I imagined Creative Assembly would come out with uh, when I look at the previous Total War games, because the previous Total War games had issues as well. But, you know, they felt a lot more complete than this one is at the moment. So the patches and updates are doing fairly well on fixing some of these problems. However, I don't think fixing overall AI intelligence is going to be something that they can do through an update. Um, unless they're going to really, you know, spend some serious time and money getting this out to the players, I honestly don't think that they're going to even touch some of the important stuff and, you know, the fundamentals of the game, which are really making the game not very good. Now, it's kind of like they've layered what was in Shogun 2, completely scraped off... Okay, let's think of this as a pizza. Okay, we'll use Shogun 2 as a big pepperoni meat feast pizza, right? With double extra cheese. Oh, God, I'm getting hungry. Anyway... And it's basically like, put it this way, Rome 2 is slapping that pizza down, getting a big fucking sword and sh slicing all the meat and cheese off and leaving the fucking base, and sprinkling Tesco value home base cheese and forgetting to put it in the oven and then giving it to your fucking people. It just does not work and it feels unfinished. Now I enjoy playing the game, the game is generally quite fun, but what I don't enjoy doing is, you know, I expected a lot more from the game. It was hyped up to be a lot more than it is, with the cool cinematic trailer we saw all the way at the end of last year, and now there isn't even any in-game cinematics at all. There's no cool, uh, at the beginning of battles, there's no really awesome speech given by your commander that was given in the original Rome Total War. And one positive is that the graphics have improved. Now, I could have really dealt with the graphics out of Shogun 2 fairly, you know, I don't care if they improved from that or not, because they were pretty goddamn good. I could run that game pretty well. Uh, but instead, we seem to have gone back uh, in several ways. And the last way which we've gone back is, you know, optimization. What the hell? Seriously. You know, the recommended I, you know, Intel processors are fourth generation. 
fourth generation Intel i7. Not many people have the money, not many gamers have the time, you know, the money uh, to, to buy that kind of process. That is a very expensive process, one of the newest out on the line. I'm thinking of 470-70K. Um, one core optimization is just not really up to scratch with what it is today. You know, quad core is probably what a lot of people have, a lot of people want. Dual core would have been nice, at least. Instead, when I check on this game, it's single core. And I just think you're not getting, you know, you're not getting enough performance out of any one system for them to enjoy the game on the highest settings possible because you've only optimized it to one core. And it is really kind of holding a lot of people back with these nice rigs. Um, you know, not really beastie rigs, but nice rigs that, you know, that like to game and can game on pretty much any game on any settings they want. And then they come to this game and it seems to hold back their GPU from performing. So there was some positives about the game. You know, there is, you know, I will continue my Let's Play, and I do enjoy playing the game. That's not something you should get confused. I enjoy playing the game. However, there is some serious letdowns which do need to be addressed um, by Creative Assembly. And those mainly are just fundamental designs of the game. And I don't know why, but they're fundamental designs in the game, which the previous Total War has got right. Why this one has got them wrong, it doesn't really make sense to me. But make sure you leave a comment in the description. Sorry, make sure you comment, leave a comment in the comment section below. What's your views on this game? What would you rate it out of 10? I'd probably give it a 6 or 7 out of 10. 7 at most. Uh, that's after a few more patches. Um, but yeah, so make sure you leave your comment of what you think about this game, you know, and what they think they need to improve. Uh, leave a like if you've enjoyed this video and you've been listening to me all the way through because, wow, you are awesome if you have. And uh, I thank you all for listening very much. Alright guys, I'll speak to you in a bit.